Welcome to Tiki Talk, the podcast, with your host, Kevin, a.k.a. Shipnut. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to Tiki Talk, the podcast. My name is Kevin. I am your host. Today, we have a great special guest on. We have Elena Nemekin, one girl, one glass, one world, social media creator, traveler extraordinaire, and wine enthusiast. It's uh, We've been going back and forth beforehand, uh, just you know, getting to know her a little bit, and uh, she has some great content, some great tips for us. So without further ado, here is our special guest, Elena Nemekin. Welcome to Tiki Club. Hey. What's going on? Oh, nothing much. No. You know, just doing, doing uh, my thing. I've been on vacation all week, so you know. Vacations are great. <laughs> vacations are great. Now, you're out there in the uh you're about three hours behind me, so it's four PM where you are? Yeah, they're about Okay, yeah. So I live in your future. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So how's things out there in the uh Pacific Northwest. Fabulous. Are they? I mean, today it was like 75, 80 degrees. Oh, see? And just like sunny and beautiful. And I'm sure next week it's going to be rainy and disgusting. And <laughs> now, you get a lot of rain up there? You get a lot of rain up there? You get a lot of rain up there? Um, yes and no. Okay. Um, it really depends on the time of year. Okay. Because like... In the summertime, we can go months without rain, and that's one thing that people don't really understand about the Northwest, but okay. that's also why we catch on fire every summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately, you know? unfortunately, yes. yeah. Yeah, you know, and we get those big wildfires. They're not like little small ones. No, they're like thousands of acres usually, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, you get those big fires out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have some fires down here in Florida, too, but. They're mostly uh, control burn, so the, the state does them periodically just to control so it doesn't get out of control, you know what I mean? Yeah, we do a lot of those in the in the wintertime and in the springtime as well, yep. but during the summer it just gets insane because we also get lightning storms in the summer. Yeah. And so a lot of our fires are started by lightning. Yeah, that, that, down here too, for sure. I live in the oh, lightning yeah. capital of the world. I, I'm yeah. about an hour south of Tampa, which is the lightning okay. capital of the world. So, yes, yeah. Yeah, I know lightning well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Elena, you are versed in so many different things. Um, you know, tell me, how did you get into social media in the beginning? How did you get into social media and being a content creator? Um, so really it goes back to my blog. I was taking a trip to California and I wanted to remember the experience. So I was like, Hey, you know what? If I'm the only person that ever reads it, that's great because then I have these memories and it just grew from there. So, you know, this, that was 12 years ago, 10 years ago now, I think it was. And it's just kind of evolved. All right, so it evolved from social media. Social media, yeah. Nice. So you just started blogging for your for your travels and stuff like that, and just wanted to document yeah, just, it for yourself, or yeah, just to document it for myself. And yeah. you know, my mom and my cousin were with me on that trip too. So you know, if we wanted to sit there and reminisce, or if we we're like, wait, what was the name of that winery that we went to in Napa that we can't remember the name of? Okay, let's look. <laughs> Yeah, like no, I, I totally so. understand it. You know, I got my social media. I started just building my tiki bar. I just started posting videos, and I was like, wow, people are actually watching these? What? <laughs> I know, when I started doing TikTok, I'm like, wait, people are actually watching yeah, these? Yeah, it's crazy, this? right? It's yeah, just crazy. If you go all the way back to the very beginnings of my TikTok, it is all over the place. Like, there's a little bit of politics in there, which I know is kind of a sticky wicket. Yeah. But there's... But you got to find yourself. And that's why you find your niche in, in social media. You have to try a few different things to see 
what sticks, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like throwing pasta at the wall. Yeah. If it sticks, it's done, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it sticks, that's what you're doing. For sure. Absolutely. So, so, so tell me about some of your travels. I mean, you documented your trip to Napa. What was your favorite part about that trip? Um, <laughs> so the, um, I think there's a story on the, uh, on the blog about how we I know. drowned rats. I know which one it was. Oh, oh yeah, mom's in the about... picture now. Hi mom. Yeah, so the one with the hot <laughs> winemaker. <laughs> yeah, so we had an appointment at this one place and they're like, when we got done, they were like, so where else are you going? And we're like, we don't know. We heard about this other one that's like right down the road from you guys. Yep. And so she was like, well, let me call and make sure that they're actually there. And the winemaker himself was there. Really? And of course, this was when I was single. So Okay. All right. <laughs> and, you know, so we were like, okay, we're going to go there. First thing, we pull into the driveway and their dog jumps on our car. No way. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Did, we didn't get pictures of that, did we? No. I mean, like, you're sitting there, you know, you pull in, and then next thing you know, you've got this black lab up on the hood of your car, and you're like, well, that's one way to be greeted. <laughs> so. Well, there's nothing wrong with a dog greeting you. I mean, that's, oh, yeah, no. that's no, all we fun. We totally open to it. We thought it was hilarious. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, the winemaker comes out and he's like, oh, are you the ladies that, uh, you know, that so-and-so from down the road called about? Yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> so, but so, there's, so there's, Napa is, is, is the place to go. It is, but it's expensive. Okay. Yeah. It's very, very expensive to go down there, especially now. Um, like we went down there, it was 10, 12 years ago. So it okay. was, you know, it was relatively cheap, quote unquote. Okay. But um, now, I, I, if people were going to California, I would tell them to look into places like Santa Barbara, the Sonoma Coast, okay. Livermore Valley. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously you want to go to Napa to get that experience because it's very picturesque. Yeah. But like for me, one of my bucket list trips is the uh, Pacific Coast Highway. I want to drive the Pacific Coast Highway. Have you ever yeah. done that? I have done parts of it. Parts of it. Okay. Yeah. So I drove, I've driven from LA to Santa Barbara on the PCH. Um, I did that in 2014. Is that when I, went, when I went down there for the bloggers conference? Yeah. So yeah, I had to ask my mom to remind me of the, <laughs> when I went down there. Um, but yeah, I did that, and it's a beautiful drive. Yeah. So, so. your travel expertise. <laughs> <laughs> so a guy like me needs to book a trip out there to the the West Coast. What would your top What would your top five places to definitely not miss be? To not miss in the whole West Coast. I know, um, but I would... here's the thing. I got a week's vacation. All right. So I got a week's <laughs> vacation. I got to stuff as much as I can get in in a week. <laughs> so I would say start in Seattle and go to Snoqualmie Falls. Okay. And then come south to Mount St. Helens, yes. which is, All right. I mean, May 18th, 1980 is a very iconic day in Pacific Northwest history. Oh, for sure. Um, wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's the day it erupted. Yeah. And so. The cool thing about Mount St. Helens is, is that they have kept part of it, like, what is it, 15 miles of, 15, 20 miles of the blast zone. They've kept it just as it was and let it evolve on its own because the scientists wanted to see what would happen. Oh, okay. That's so interesting. It's, yeah. It's very interesting to go up there. Right now, you can't get past a certain point, though, because the road caved in this oh. spring. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that was a that was one way to celebrate the yeah. uh, the fortieth anniversary or the forty third <laughs> anniversary of it. <laughs> yeah. Can't get there. Sorry, road caved in. Yeah, I mean you can see it pretty much all the way up, but you just can't get to the very last visitor center, uh, which is about five miles from the crater. Okay, gotcha. So, all right. 
Um, but then after Mount St. Helens, I would say do the Columbia River Gorge, either the Washington or Oregon side. And then yeah. um, I would go down to California into the Redwoods. Oh, yeah, that's supposed so, to be beautiful. Yeah. That's so supposed like, to be absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and then some somewhere along in there, add in the either the Washington or Oregon coast, um, yeah. just because they're both, they're not your traditional beach. Like, you guys in Florida, you have, like, the sandy beaches. I and- want to see the Goonies coast. Yes! I want to see the Goonies coast. That is in Astoria, Oregon. If you're a Goonies fan, yes, you have to. And the house was actually recently bought by some Goonies fans. And so they're trying really? to get it so that it's open to everybody that wants to come and experience it, you know, or at least come up there, get pictures, and, you know, maybe not necessarily go inside the house. Yeah. Um, but Astoria is also cool because they have a uh, film museum. Oh, really? Yeah, because there's been a lot of movies, actually, that have been filmed in Oregon. Well, and it's got a beautiful Astoria backdrop. Well. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, you know. Free Willy was filmed up here. Yep. Uh, um, Twilight was filmed there, too, wasn't it? Yeah. Parts, parts of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of it. Um, and, like, um, Twilight actually, about, what, how first climb, like, 15 miles from the house? Yeah. One of the locations for Twilight is actually just like a 20 minute drive from our house. Really? The, the high school that they used yep. um, is in a town called Kalama, Washington, and they use that to their advantage. It's a teeny tiny town, but they use it. Really? As a way to draw people in and draw tourism into the town. So. Yeah. It's either that or the antiques. <laughs> <laughs> so. a, lot of, a lot of antiques up that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kalam is kind of like the antique town. Okay. Um, they have a couple of different, what, they have like five antique shops? Yeah, something like that. So. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So. I see, I love antique shops. You never know what you're going to find. But exactly. when you're out looking, it's like, it's like being on an episode of American Pickers. You don't know what you're going to find. It's just <laughs> the nostalgia stuff is just, wow, they used this back then? That's pretty cool, you know? Just yeah. to see how things were, you know, we went to, um, I was out West and we went to uh, Nevada city and old ghost towns and you can see all the old stuff there and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty cool. So I, I like poking around a antique shop down, you know, every now and again, you can see yeah. some good stuff. Yeah. And like you said, you never know what you're going to find. And yeah. maybe you find, I know some people have found stuff that completes a set that they have. Uh huh. You know, like a set of China or, you know, just random things that they have. So Yeah. So, all right. So we know the places to go now. Where do I stay? <laughs> Where do you stay? And what, um, what tips can you give me about staying in, in some hotels? Um, The biggest thing, when you walk in to check in, have your ID and your credit card ready to go. And don't question us why we need it, because it's actually a security measure for you. Um, it's a to prevent fraud. Um, oh, that, fraud is huge. Absolutely. I yeah. understand that. Yeah. You know, so that's the biggest thing. But also just be nice to us. You know, I, for for a little context, I've worked in the I've worked in the hotel industry for the last almost six years now. And the biggest thing is just be nice. You know, you don't necessarily have to remember our names, but, you know, be nice to us. We're going to be nice to you back. Yeah, don't you must oh. brand names. Oh, and brand names. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we pretty much have every brand name up here. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on your budget as well. Yeah. Um, for the coast, I will warn people, for the Oregon coast, you won't find like Hilton's or Marriott's. You'll find a lot of Best Westerns and Comfort Inn's. Yeah. So you have to. Do you find a lot of, um, you find a lot of like, B and B's, bed and breakfast, and stuff like that. There yeah, too. a lot of B and B's, a lot of mom and pop hotels down yeah. at the coast mm-hmm. as well. Um, Sometimes those are better, though. Sometimes those are really oh, yeah. nice. Oh you know? yeah, like um, you know, travel lodge and people Bay. Yeah, like there's this uh, travel lodge at Depot Bay. It's just this unassuming building, but you get in there and you realize that all of the rooms are oceanfront rooms. And so you look Ooh. out and you have this great view. There's actually a picture of it on my Instagram uh, somewhere. Yeah. 
very dumb. Somewhere there. on my like, Instagram. Yeah. I know. I know that feeling. Trust me. <laughs> well, we went down there. Um, we were down there. It was before the, right before the pandemic started, actually. Yeah. It was a couple months before. Um, and so, you know, like 2019. And like this picture that I have, it's looking straight out at the ocean. And, or yeah. kind of view, but you also have all the rocks and everything because Oregon's coast is very rocky. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, there's sand, but there's also a lot of rocks. <laughs> so, we'll be right back. We're just reloading the cannons and filling our rum. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey guys, don't forget to go over to shipnut.net and get everything you've ever wanted. Go over to shipnut.net right here. We have podcasts, we have blogs, we have cocktail recipes, Amazon store, everything you need right here. It's a one-stop shop. Don't forget to click on that CW Spirits link. Get your favorite spirits delivered to your door. Also, don't forget, check out the merch shop. You can get all your favorite Shipnut merch right there at the merch shop. So check out shipnut.net. Guys, help me out. Go to shipnut.net, guys. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, I guess too. So, well, a lot of like the beaches, like people make think Key West has beautiful beaches. Not the case. Yeah. Key West is rock beach. Mm -hmm. They have to import the sand to make the beach in Key West because all right, it's bye. all rock. Now, where I'm at, I live. 10 minutes away from the most beautiful beach in the country, Siesta Key, with okay. the white white sugar sand, and it's absolutely gorgeous, but not all of Florida has these beautiful, picturesque beaks. I know. I'm a NASCAR fan, so I've seen a lot of Daytona. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Daytona's nice, too. Daytona, yeah. you can drive on the beach. It's beautiful. Yeah, and you can do that, actually, in Washington as well. You yeah. can drive on the beach, um, and our beach is actually a state highway. Really? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> it is, but it's also kind like of it has a number and everything. Well, it doesn't have a number, but it is still, it's designated as a state highway just because everybody kind of knows. So it's like the one oh one alternative <laughs> <laughs> now getting to it. Sometimes you end up getting uh, an axle deep in the sand because you hit it wrong. <laughs> Well, yeah, I can the see wrong. you know, every state has some weird highway. Like when yeah. I was in New England and Massachusetts, the breakdown lane is a travel lane during rush hour. Yeah. When I went yeah. to, I went to Boston. Oh God, this was, years yep, and years that's years where ago. you've seen it. <laughs> and I was like, wait, people are driving on the shoulder. Yep. How? Yeah. That's a travel <laughs> lane during <laughs> rush hour. Yes. Up here, that is actually the breakdown lane um, in Portland. It's actually dedicated for like buses and express transit. Really? Yeah. And like there's signs saying, you know, keep it clear for the buses for express transit, for emergency services. I mean, just today we were driving and the fire department was responding to an accident on the freeway and they're like, they weren't on the shoulder. They were straight up in the median because you could see the dust cloud behind the, the fire truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's God. weird. It's it's just weird how all the different states are, are crazy. Yeah. Listen, I would never want to see that down here in Florida because people that drive down here, <laughs> no, no, nope. It's a different kind of world driving down in Florida, let me tell you. <laughs> I... I I've never driven in Florida. I've actually never been to Florida. Come oh, to you gotta come so, down. Yeah, I know. I know. That's what. That's one of my. Des that's one of my bucket list destinations. Is I do want to come down to Florida. Yep. Um And I want to go to like North Carolina and South Carolina as well. Yeah, beautiful so, country. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the the Southeast is really a place that I haven't done a lot of travels to. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Like I've done all all the East Coast from Maine to Key West. I've done everything there you know mm -hmm. um i've done some canada i've been to montreal montreal is beautiful i love montreal um i've done kentucky tennessee 
Vegas, Colorado, Montana. And I love Colorado. Colorado is gorgeous. Colorado one of my favorite areas. Yeah. The only thing that trips me up is when you're going west in Colorado, you see the mountains. But up here in the Pacific Northwest, if you see the mountains, you're going east. Yeah. Well, so it, it trips me up to have that opposite effect. Yeah, because you get the Rocky Mountains coming the other way. Yeah. Yeah, well, I I have the Cascades first, and then the Rockies. Oh, yeah, the Cascades. Yep. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Well, you know, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, geography also, lesson, everybody. A little geography <laughs> lesson. Well, there's actually three. Well, yeah, there's three um, mountain ranges in the Pacific Northwest because we also have the Coast Range, which is a bunch of smaller mountains between, like, the Willamette Valley and the Oregon Coast. Okay. So, it, it's... Yeah, I'm like, wait, we have too many mountains up here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any mountains in Florida. None. Yeah. But that's also because of where, like, the tectonic plates and yeah. all that are. Because we have a subduction zone right off of the coast. The yeah. Cascadia subduct subduction zone. So mm -hmm. we're, we're due for a big, a bit of a shaker at some point in time. <laughs> now, do you, do you get earthquakes up there a lot? We or? do. Okay. Yeah, we do. Um, Not like California, though. It's no, we don't get them quite as often as California. Yeah. Um, but we've definitely had some pretty big ones. Um, but when they happen, some of us were like, "Wait, was that an earthquake, or did the 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 Air National Guard fly over?" <laughs> yeah, it just shakes a little bit and it's done. Yeah, or it just sounds like fighter jets coming over. That was one of them, one of the last ones we had. I was like, did the F-15 scramble out of PDX, or was that an earthquake? <laughs> like, we literally had to look to see. Really? If we just had an That's earthquake awesome. If the F-15s had scrambled, yeah. so. Awesome. Oh. Oh, that is that's oh, crazy. Now, this is the picture from the... Uh, hotel my mom found it oh wow so yeah that's a great view yeah it that's is a great it really view. is yeah you know and just about every room at that hotel has it really a view like that yeah so and uh -huh. everybody in the pacific northwest you show them that picture they know exactly where you're at <laughs> yeah <laughs> they know where you're at because yeah. it's such a popular destination and depot bay is uh what is it the world's smallest harbor really yeah Okay. Like it's literally like this big, it wow. seems like. So, and it's part of the Pacific Coast Highway. Yeah, it yeah it's part oh. of the, it's part of the 101. So, okay. yeah. So if you if you took if you were to drive the US 101, you'd go through Depot. You go through Depot Bay, and there you are. Yep. That's yeah. awesome. See, now you make me want to go out to the West. Travel Do West, it. my friend. Travel West. Do it. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to get there. It is on my bucket list of where to go. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, and and it's so cool because you would see so many different things out here. You know, yeah. like a month isn't even enough for people to come out here and see everything that they want to see. Well, it's not in, in most places. It's to actually see the area, you need to spend some time there. Oh, know? yeah. To a any place. Well, not any place because... <laughs> You you can go to Vegas for three days and you've had enough. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. But for most areas, um, like I've been to Yellowstone twice, and I could spend, I could spend a decade there. It's so beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. So I could go back there. Um, Florida, yeah, Florida's. You, you can see a lot in Florida in a little time. Even in the Northeast, those little ass states. <laughs> yeah, like you drive two hours and you're in a whole new state. Yeah, exactly. After you drive two hours and you're lucky if you've left the state. Yeah, I mean, I have to drive five hours to get out of Florida. Yeah. It takes me five hours to get to Georgia. Yeah, it's, um, for us, it's about five or six hours to get to Canada. Yeah. Um, but, like, if we wanted to go, if we wanted to get outside of Portland, it's, like, within two hours we could be just about anywhere outside of portland yeah so with mountains the coast down south and like more central yeah. lama valley area so yeah okay so you work in the hospitality business uh-huh 
<laughs> give me some stories. Give me some dirt on. Give me some good stories oh. that you might have working in the what? hospitality industry. What story can I share that won't get you banned? <laughs> ah, whatever. It's a podcast. Well, um, so there was. And I actually wasn't there for this one, but I heard about it. Um, there was somebody who left some um, adult toys oh, in a bag wow. in, a hall, in the hallway outside of their room. Hmm. <laughs> um, wow, they, to... they left some used uh, utensils out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, needless to say, he that, that guest, um, they got a, a chit-chat with the manager. Yeah. That um, that was a long term guest. Um, oh, a long term guest. Yeah, I oh. worked in the, my the first hotel that I worked at was a uh, residence in, so it was an extended stay, you know, with the little kitchenettes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I had a lot of people that were just coming in for for work, or they were um, coming in because their house had caught fire and they needed repairs. Um. <sighs> What? Tell them about Tom. Oh, yeah. Um, I've had guests oh, boy. that were... Um, this is going to be a juicy one. When mom <laughs> in the back says, tell them about Tom. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, Tom was a really cool guy. He was... Um, he was very nice. Yeah, very nice, very generous. Um, yeah. He, um, he was a designer, and his wife worked for one of the local hospital systems. Okay. And so they, but she was able to work from home and they would like split their time between Oregon and Europe. Oh, wow. They came in, they came in during COVID and they had broken the, or they had uh, not renewed the lease on their place, but they couldn't get to Europe. So they needed somewhere to stay. And they were at my hotel for four or five months at the time. Um, That's an extended stay right there. That's for sure. Extended stay. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, um, like I've had so many guests from different places. I had a, uh, a lobby full of FBI agents one morning and I was like, yeah, I dare people to try something. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, something's <laughs> the, going the on. FBI headquarters in Portland. It was right next door to my hotel is uh, right next door okay. to the, the hotel. Yeah. So they were staying there. Um, I, I, yeah, I've had, People that work for federal agencies lose their minds, and that was a fun phone call from my boss saying, oh, oh yeah, by the way, um, somebody from the Department of Homeland Security wants to talk to you. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> it boy. Was the internal affairs because they had to, because of this particular person, yeah. uh, the issues that they were having, they wanted to make sure that they hadn't done anything that they weren't supposed to in the hotel room. That's crazy. So That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, but I mean, for the most part, I've had just kind of normal experiences. <laughs> All right. Normal experience. The normal. Department of Homeland Security is here. I mean, of course, yeah, you know, <laughs> but yeah, beyond, beyond having... Homeland Security there. I mean, during the riots here in Portland, I had... Oh, yeah. I had all sorts... I, I was probably one of the more secure hotels. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I... There was one night where, you know, we can't sell liquor pa- or alcohol past 2 a.m. up okay. here. Okay, yeah. And there was one day where it was like 2.30 and these guys came back from, you know, dealing with the crap that was happening in downtown Portland. And I'm like, okay, you know what? If OLCC walks in right now, I'm going to tell them, well, why don't you go ask these gentlemen to show you their badges? Right. <laughs> because I was selling them beer and I'm like, cause I didn't, I was like, you guys have been out there dealing with crap all yeah. night long. All so, right, yeah. so here's our question. Shannon Wolf Gallagher says, did you ever host any celebrities Um, in the, the hotel? Uh, the biggest one that I've ever had personally that I knew about was at the time she was the Postmaster General of the United States. Wow, okay. Yeah, and I mean, she had a lot of security. Not celebrity, but a pretty no, important but, person. But yeah. High, you know, a very high ranking official that was very, you know, like yeah. you could Google her name and you'd find out who she was. Yeah. I can't 
I can't remember what her name is. Her first name was Meg. Okay. But I can't remember anything else, <laughs> like her last name, because uh, you know I'm like, okay, why is she here? Why do I have yep. so many rooms surrounding her? Oh uh, yeah, all <laughs> like her. her security details. Yeah, and, all her entourage yeah. is there. Yeah, and security. they were very far from her. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Yeah. You know, so, social media. I know you started blogging and stuff like that. How did you get into the drink scene? Um. It was just kind of a natural progression from the the trip to Napa. Yeah. Because like I was like, okay, you know what? Why don't I just start documenting my journey with what I'm learning about wine, what I like, what I don't like. Um, and of course, you know, it went from wine to beer and spirits. And <laughs> now it's a monster. Well, <laughs> it's the monster that it is today. I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm like, um what can I make with this? No, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm literally like, okay, um, I've done how many mules and yeah, yeah, you go. versions of a martini. And <laughs> it's <laughs> tough. It's tough to stay creative with that. Oh yeah. You I know, mean, it really is. It, you know, and I'm so grateful for producers like Marcotte who will come onto your comments and be like, try it with this. Yes. Try it with that. Yes. Um, you know, and then yep. like, um, you know, going into like one of the bigger creators like Club Dirty or One Big Pikey, going into their comments and just stealing. Yes. Drink you know, suggestions. I haven't done that. Really? I haven't done that. I, I should. I should start, you know, swiping I some comments. Just filmed one last night that was in Pikey's comments about a month and a half ago. Yeah. And it was actually a really good drink. It really? was. Uh, yeah, it was um, Smirnoff screwdriver, pineapple rum, and coconut rum. Oh. Yeah. Now you're talking my language. <laughs> it was, it, yeah, it was potent, but it was good. I mean, <laughs> so. Oh, I mean, what's I potent? I, I did a <laughs> yeah. pina colada with nothing but moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to do that because I don't, I still don't have the pineapple moonshine. Oh, gotta get it. So. Gotta get it. I know. So your, your wine. I am not. A wine person i've tried i've i've tried so many different times to find a wine it might be because i have no idea what i'm doing um but what do, all right a guy like me what what can you tell me when trying a wine because i i found one wine that i like and that's the renegade, right? That's the renegade, yes. <laughs> because it's almost that's, like a wine cooler. Yeah, and you know, I like it. Um, it's not you it's not my usual style for, for wine, but I do like it. Yeah. I have a bottle actually sitting at home that I need to crack open. Yeah. The lemon wine. Oh, okay. <laughs> my mom's <laughs> looking at me like, wait, what? What's that? <laughs> but, but like what no, what do I, I look for when I'm when I'm looking for a wine? Because I've tried I've tried wines. I grew up in an Italian family. Okay. We, we had wine at every meal. Every meal, there was a bottle of wine. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. <laughs> My grandfather used to make his own wine. Um, trust me, I've been around wine. Really? I haven't found one that I... Is it like an acquired taste, or do I have... Do, am I tasting it wrong, or what am I looking for? Some of them are an acquired taste, especially like a bigger, bolder red. Um, like for the longest time, I didn't like Cabernet until I had one that had been aged. She wasn't my daughter at that time. <laughs> I got to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> she likes the she likes the big, bold Cabernets. She okay. cut her teeth in 1973 in France on Bordeaux. So, okay, okay. On Cabernet Sauvignons. But I mean, like, I think the biggest thing is just keep trying until you find something you like. Um, if you have a, a good wine shop by you, you can tell them, you know, hey, this is what I normally drink. You know, like, there's usually something for everybody. So, like, if you're a whiskey drinker, they can steer you in the direction of a of the correct, you know, of a wine that might fit the profile that you like. Yeah. Well, whiskey's um, a whole nother rabbit hole. We're not going to go oh, down there. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know. <laughs> We'll be right back. 
We're just reloading the cannons and filling our rum. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, Tiki Talk the Podcast is looking for guests. Yes, if you know anyone who has a special story, talent, whatever it may be, product they want to promote, anything they want to get out to the world, we want to talk to them here at Tiki Talk. Head over to shipnut.net, fill out that form, and we'll be in contact soon. So, once again, we're looking for guests here at Tiki Talk. If you know anyone with a great story, get them in contact with us. Cheers, guys. See, now, right. like Christmas time. Look, TikTok is what sucked me into yeah, this whole right? bar talk. <laughs> like Christmas time, I'll go to my liquor store. I'll get with the wine specialist there, the Salmon Year or whatever it is. Uh, and I'll be like, listen, I need a bottle of wine for my mother in law. I don't have a clue. What's she going to like? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I buy wine. <laughs> Hey, and that's perfectly fine. You know, I mean, not all of us can know that, you know, like this is a really good bottle of wine. This is a Oregon Pinot Noir from one of my favorite producers from Stoller Estate. And, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, I've had this. I know it's good, but. Because you've had it. Yeah. And, you know, so like if I were to the label, the store, like you look at wine labels are pretty boring. Yes, they are. That they, they are. They're, they're very yeah. boring. They don't give you much information at all. Yeah, no. I mean, that one is pretty, pretty basic. It's a basic well, label. Yeah, it's yeah. not a cluster. So, yeah. but it it tells what needs to be told. Okay. Because and how the Tax and Trade Bureau has very specific requirements for wine. So, like, it has to say the varietal. It has to say who it's from. Um, somewhere on there, it needs to say, hold on, I have to look at it. It has to say the um, uh, ABA, if it's a, a ABA specific wine or American Viticultural Association okay. um, designation. Okay. So I was just going to ask, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is kind of, the ABAs are kind of like subsections. Okay of states so like oregon has the willamette valley which is its own viticultural area okay but then it has little smaller pockets and there's certain criteria that has to be met and you have to go through a process with the tax and trade bureau to prove hey this is why it needs to be you know why wow. this area needs to be designated as you know, John's Hill ABA. Okay. Or whatever, whatever you decide to call it. So, so maybe kind of like tequila has yeah, to be grown. Yeah. Like tequila to be tequila has to be grown in a certain area in Mexico certified yep. by the Mexican government. Yep. And just like champagne, um, real okay. champagne has to be grown in the champagne region of France. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it is a wow. it is a protected um, it's a protected like term or name. Um, huh. It's you know the problem is, is that everybody calls every sparkling wine champagne, but you know all. Well, I know it's not. Yeah, yeah no, and all all champagnes are sparkling wine, but not all sparkling wines are champagne. Just like all bourbons are whiskey, but not all whiskeys are bourbons. True. So, you know, um, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's so technical. There's a lot of technicalities in alcohol, for sure. (laughs) There is. Yeah. It's mind boggling. And it's like, you're constantly learning something new with it. I mean, I'm sure if you went into, if you went down that wine rabbit hole, you would be lost for months. Just. Mm -hmm. On ev- all the information there is on wine, same thing with tequila, bourbon, whiskey. Uh, th- there's so much out there; it'll make your head spin. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know, like I have books. Mom, can you grab me the that book back there? You know, like I have books that are like this thick 
Yeah. On nothing but one. In fact, my mom's grabbing it, one of them for me. Um, but this is one of my favorites. It's called the Wine Bible. Ooh. And it's pretty yeah. thick. <laughs> but it talks about um, Italian wines, French wines, U.S. wines. Like, you want to know about a particular region it's probably in this book. really okay right now i have the second edition right now i think it's on the fourth it's been updated i just haven't gotten the updated version yet so now don't get me wrong i am not the <laughs> wine guy no. i'm asking for my own now different regions have a different flavor profile or or is it just a yeah, different, different wines Different flavor profile, different grapes grow better in different areas. Okay. So, like, the northern part of Oregon, we grow a lot of Pinot Noir. Um, but down in the southern part of Oregon, down, like, by Medford, Ashland, Grants Pass area, they can do more um, Spanish-style varietals, like Tempranillo. They can also grow Syrah down there. So, they right. can... It, so it it's very climate based okay. too. Oh. <clears throat> so if you do a Pinot from say Oregon and a Pinot from California, is there a big difference? I, I'm I'm just trying yeah. to learn for myself. No, no, I laugh because that's a very common comparison. And yeah, there's a huge difference between an Oregon Pinot and a California Pinot. Yeah. Um, at least in the ones that I've had. Okay. Usually, I find the Oregon Pinots to be a little bit more earthy, so a little bit more like mushroom and kind of this like funky forest floor type scent. Like, it's not something that you can quite put your finger on. Okay, well, that doesn't sound too <laughs> it's like, appetizing. It's like being outside, you know, when you're outside in the woods and you smell like the pine sap and the yeah, dirt you, sm you smell that. nature. Yeah, you know, it's very different. Whereas okay. California Pinots, the ones that I've had, usually tend to be a little bit more on the fruitier side. So okay. like more cherry, strawberry, stuff like that. Okay. So. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I have to try more wines. That's, I mean, <laughs> yes. that's what it is. I have to just try. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, just find what you like. You know, just, you know, even if you go out and you buy a $5 bottle of Barefoot, Pinot Grigio or Pinot Noir, whatever you know, whatever hey, suits your fancy. The wine of my day was Bottles and James. Yeah. And Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. Yep. <laughs> Maybe that's I why I don't like, like wine. Yeah, I, I remember those quite fondly. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I don't want to remember some of those, but let's <laughs> yeah. just say no. I mean, why do that? Why, why go down that road when we have stuff like Dr. Stoner's now? Well, you know, I'm, all right I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. You know, <laughs> so. I'm all right with that. But no, I mean, for, you know, for under $10, there's a lot of great stuff, at least around here. There's a lot of great stuff in the yeah. grocery store. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know what every area yeah. in the country has. But usually, you can find some really, really good wines for, you know, five, ten, fifteen dollars $15. Um, even if it's on clearance and you're wondering why, <laughs> usually it's because if it's around this time of year, it's usually because they're getting, um, ready to release new vintages, new, okay. new years. So, so it doesn't it have to be a hundred dollar bottle of wine to be good. No. no, my favorite, one of my favorite bottles is, um, this is a Columbia Crest Chardonnay. Okay. I paid eight bucks for it. Really? Yeah. Eight dollars in the grocery store. All right. You know, yeah, this so this bottle of stoller was oh god, probably what forty? Thirty or forty. But you know, you can do just as good eight dollars. So. Right. Yeah, you know. So it's so you, you really have to just try them. Exactly. Exactly. Now, what and, would be know, the difference? Now, you hear people des describe wine as, oh, this is a dry wine, or this is a... How do they get that distinction? So, dry usually means that it doesn't have any residual sugar in it. And okay. um, so, like, that's what makes Rieslings 
sweet sometimes is that level of sugar that's in there. Um, a lot of red wines are going to be dry no matter what it says. There's some level of dryness because it's not the... Well, is that from the tannins in there? From the grapes? Yeah, from yeah. the tannins okay. and the... You know, and just the process of making red wine. Yeah. Um, it's a very different process than. See, you thought I wine. was smart. I knew about tannins, huh? <laughs> yeah, hey, <laughs> no, because if you've drank tea, you know about tannins. Yeah. See, you I know? like tea. Yeah. So, I, you know, you, I, I can drink tea. Yeah. So, you know, it, I would say, you know, try with, try a Pinot Noir. Okay. If you, if you like the, um, you know, if you like tea or even try, um, even like a Syrah or a Syrah or Shiraz, it's the same grape. Yeah. And that's the other thing with wine is sometimes they'll be named the same. They'll have different names, but it's the same grape. Okay. Like now, Pinot Gris or- I know someone that loves um, Riesling. Okay. What is that just a, what, what is that? So Riesling is a grape. Okay. It's a grape varietal. Okay. And it's just a variety of grape. Yeah. And it's okay. a white wine. Um, primarily it's grown in colder regions. So like Alsace, France has some great Rieslings. Germany is known for Riesling. Um, Washington is really coming into its own with some Rieslings as well. Has been for quite a while now. Um, thank you Chateau St. Michel for your 2 million cases of Riesling that you produce per year for getting that onto the map. (laughs) Two million cases of Riesling? Two, two million cases of Riesling. Uh, and that's just Riesling. <laughs> Chateau St. Michel has everything wow. under the sun. They're, they are our largest producer. Wow. And they, yeah, they put out a lot. And usually, you know, their, their baseline, their standard wines, you can get them for $10, $15 in the grocery store. Really? But then, yeah, but then, you, you know, if you see... One that's twenty dollars. It's usually just the next step up okay. in their stuff. So, you know, it's something you know. Usually, it's like from a specific vineyard, or it's just something that they did as a special release. So now, aging of wine is important, also like like a bourbon or something. Aging is important to wine, all wine or some wine. Um. Well. Yes and no. It depends on what you like. So okay. in about a month, month and a half, right before Thanksgiving, we're going to see a lot of something called Beaujolais out on the wine market. Okay. And it's a very fruity wine. And it's only been, it's like literally, like right now they're harvesting the grapes for Beaujolais. And in six weeks, it'll be in the bottle and ready for people to drink. See, I might like that. Yeah. It, because I like I like fruity. I like yeah. I like and sweet and I like fruity. Yes, you would like Beaujolais then. Okay. Um so right around Thanksgiving you'll start seeing some Beaujolais wines in the grocery store just because it is so so good with Thanksgiving food. Really? Yeah, because it's light. Um you know, Thanksgiving food can be awfully heavy. And so it's yeah, it sits there yeah, for a yeah. while. Yeah, I can get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, you have to and you have to think about everything that's on the table too. You don't necessarily want something that's gonna be huge. You know, you don't necessarily want a cab, even though a cab can be great with some Thanksgiving foods. Yeah. You may not want that, or not everybody's gonna want that. So you get something that's kind of a little bit more across the board with people. Okay. So, you know, Beaujolais is great for that. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. Now would that, that wouldn't be considered a dessert wine. No. Okay. No, it, um, Beaujolais is its own like category of wine. All right. Um, it's made from a grape called Gamay Noir, which is a cousin to Pinot. Oh, so, all right. Yeah. Um, so it's going to kind of have that same profile for Pinot Noir. It's going to be like cherry and strawberry, um, kind of this red fruit, red and dark fruit that you get. So, so would it have like that, that tannin dryness no, or? No, that's the great thing about Gamay is that it doesn't have the tartness of Pinot. Okay. It, it just has that fruitiness. Oh, so, all right. Yeah. Okay. 
So. I'm going to definitely have to try that. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, you should be seeing them come out within the next, um, well, usually I think, I think Beaujolais Day is like a week before Thanksgiving. Like it All actually right. has its own like release day. Really? Yeah. And you know, like everybody celebrates it. It seems like so. All right. So note to self, watch this episode back. <laughs> rewind before thanksgiving to know what wine i'll is message it. you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah please i might need that <laughs> so if you had a choice red or white rosé rosé actually go rose. in between yeah in between <laughs> all right um just because everybody thinks rosé is a summer wine when it's not you can drink that stuff year round yeah you know it I mean, and you can like, drink any. You, I can drink pina okay, coladas year round. Drink whatever you like, whenever you like. Uh, I don't care. Yeah, you know, that's, exactly. At the end of the day, I'm like, hey, you know what? If you want to drink that, you know, if you think that five dollar bottle of wine that you got is the best thing ever, then go ahead and enjoy it because it's what you like. You know, my so palate, you're gonna say that about box wine? Oh yeah. Totally. Okay. You, that, know, you I, like I, box wine? I've had some good box wine. I've had okay. some bad box wine. Okay. All <laughs> you know, right. But it's just like everything else out there. There's the good, the bad, and the wait, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> so why would you even you produce know. this? <laughs> yeah. Like I've had the um, black box wines. Okay. Um, I've really enjoyed those. They're really popular. Um, black box yeah, is they are. It's, it's really popular. People like it. Yeah, and they last forever. You know, if I were to open this bottle, the problem is, is once I take the cap off, there's going to be air that gets in to the bottle and that's going to affect the taste and the flavor of the wine. Well, you, you just need that stopper that has the wine glass on top and, and you just, you <laughs> yeah. ever see that? <laughs> I have, I have. You know, and yeah, there's, um, there's like products that you can actually buy, like gas like gases that you can put in that are like argon gas that are lighter than oxygen yeah to kind of help but at the end of the day no <laughs> after a while you're just like um um yeah i think i need to just let it have its have its rest well you get like but, three or four pours out of a bottle right yeah 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 um but those boxed wines they come in a pl because they come in a plastic bag you can, they literally just kind of condense upon themselves. So the air doesn't get into it. Exactly. Okay. And it, you know, it's that, that nozzle that you pour yep. out of. So. Yeah. Yeah. The wine so, tap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah tap. You know, and you know, and don't, you know, I, I can't knock that because if you only, you know, if you only drink one or two glasses of wine a week, then why not get the boxed wine that's going to last for yeah, a yeah. month and a half in your refrigerator? So. I'm like you, you know, if, if you enjoy drinking it, drink it. Mm -hmm. I like sweet fruity drinks, you know, yeah. but I also yeah. enjoy a nice bourbon every now and again, yeah, and but that's not that's, my only go-to, you know? And, you know, and this is not a big knock at bourbon TikTok, but that's what drives me crazy about bourbon TikTok is they're like, oh, if you don't drink larceny, you're a bad person. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. or if you like Brothers Bond, which I love Brothers Bond. Oh, I think it's, I think it's a great bourbon. I, it's I, a great bourbon. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't know much about bourbon, that's a good one to start with. Oh, for honesty. sure. Oh, absolutely. And, but, but, you know, you talk to some people on Bourbon TikTok and they're going to be like, oh, no, that's a $30 bottle of bourbon. No, I'm going to be snooty about it. Well. Okay, fine. Whatever. Well, I get, <laughs> I get the, uh, the comments. Well, be a man and drink bourbon. Why are you drinking these fruity drinks? You know, why don't you just be a man and, and drink it right? It's like, you have I don't to want to. to yeah. You have to appeal to everybody. Yeah. When it comes to social media, if you really want to get that reach, you have to appeal to a broad audience. Yeah. Well, you so, know, you know, you know what the haters are like. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. whatever. Uh, you, you know, know like, I'm, I'm making drinks for. The ma majority of people to enjoy. If you don't like it, don't make it. The, yeah. You know, if, if it's not your gem, it's not your gem. But it's gonna 
end up being somebody's jam somewhere down the road. Yeah. Like I made the cotton candy shot and Mm -hmm. I I think you do edit it. Um, but I had a a lot of hate from that, from, from uh, that video. And it was like, dude, just let it go. I mean, if you don't like it, don't make it just scroll past, you know, it's like, you don't need to drink it. You know, and like the people that get really judgy and say, oh, well, you're an alcoholic. No. I get that all the time. Yeah, Yeah, and a lot of times I want to turn around and ask these people, I'm like, what makes you, you know, what, what makes you think that that's actually alcohol that's being poured? How do you know that that clear liquid that he's pouring into the drink isn't flipping water? Yeah. Well. I don't do that personally. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've done that on some, but I well, haven't. You know. I, I can't lie. I have. When I had yeah. not much left in the bottle, not enough for a shot, I was like, shit. Yeah. All right. I got to make it look like it. Or yeah. I'll edit the video to say, here's this. And then, you know. Yeah. you know, Especially if it's one that you're not showing your face on. Yeah. Like some you of know. my drinks, I'm going to be honest with you. I'll take a drink. I'll take a sip for the video. I'll enjoy it. Yeah. But I don't drink the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Same. I'll my hand it off to somebody than, or it's like, my okay. My drinks better than I do sometimes. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> or drinks more I can't be I out there making five or six videos in a row and yeah. no. be okay. It's not possible. Yeah. It's not possible. So. But I have to feel comfortable. You know, you have to make content when you have the time, exactly. especially when, like, you and I, um, this isn't our full-time gig. You know what I mean? No. This, this We do this for fun, enjoyment. I mean, I have a blast doing it. I really do. I do, too. You know. You know, and it for me, it's, it's fun to just sit there and try new things. Oh, yeah. You know. That's why I like CW they, Spirits because they yeah. they've turned me on to so many different things that I would never have tried. Yeah, like Rasta Bob. Oh I, yeah. I would have never before I started doing this. I would have probably been like, yeah, no, I don't like rum. They turned CW Spirits has turned me on to rum. Okay, all right. So you know, all like, right, well, we can be I, friends now. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, no, I didn't, before I started doing this, and the reason why is I'm 99% sure is because all I was seeing was Captain and Bacardi, yeah. you know, I was seeing the mass-produced stuff, I didn't actually have a chance to try any craft rum, or, you know, smaller producers. Yeah. So. My my go-to rum right now is uh, Bombarda. Oh, I so love that Bombarda rum. I really do. Yeah. I, I got a, so I got a formidable coming. So cool. Yeah. I, I got the 18 year coming. Um, I can't wait for that to get here. And then um, they released a 22 year. I heard that. That I'm trying to um, commandeer a bottle from Captain James himself. Wink, wink, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which. I'm going to get him on the podcast too, uh, oh, one know, of these days. Cool. So we've been talking in the background and we're just working things have, out. So they have such a cool story. It's an awesome story. Awesome. Oh. If you read their story on their website, it is his story is awesome. He traveled the world, bought rums back, shared them with his dad, talked about his trips. What better story can that be? And that was his connection to rum. Exactly. That's an awesome story. Like you travel with your mom, right? And you guys drink wine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I mean, like we have in our family, we actually do have a familial connection to producing alcohol. (laughs) My great grandfather was a moonshiner. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. You want to uh, you want to message me some secret family <laughs> recipes? I don't have any of them. What? Um, yeah, no, I don't have because my great grandfather died 
before I was born. He died in 1962. So, right. you know, he, it was 17 years before I was even thought of. So, Mom, do you yes. have the secret family recipe? No, but I can tell you that one of my cousin's husbands does have the still. Ah. Yeah. So the still, the still and, is, they, and they still use it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, but we need to get up there. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need to reconnect. But I will tell you a story. All right. High to Prohibition, and uh, my grandfather lived next to the end of a major uh, wildfire. I mean, like the wildfire stopped just directly across the road from his house. Became a great hunting area. Really? Still is. So my grandfather would go out with his moonshine and give it to the... King wardens, so that they didn't get cold waiting for the hunters to come back out. What a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, though. That's, yeah. I mean. And, and then, you know, when they would do raids, um, the neighbors caught wind that there was going to be a raid coming into town. And mind you, this is like small town, like everybody knows everybody. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. you don't know you're in trouble, but your mom already knows you're in trouble. Yep. Type town. So the neighbors caught wind of a raid coming into town. They go across the street to my great grandmother's house, my great grandparents' yeah. house, and ask to hide there still. Oh, hey, you want to <laughs> yeah. throw this in the in the closet for a minute? Yeah, hold on. Oh, yeah. Even, even better, they put it up in the attic. <laughs> and so when the when the um, when they came to do the raid, obviously they didn't find the still. Yeah. So the cops went over to my great grandparents' house. Wow. And they're like, ma'am, because it was my great grandmother who opened the door. My grand, my great grandfather worked on the railroad. Okay. And so he was gone during the week. Yeah. But, you know, they came over and they asked my great grandmother, they're like, ma'am, do you have any idea about your neighbors having a still? You know, we know that you are like so busy with your eight kids and your husband's gone. My great grandmother was like, no, I don't know anything about it. It was right above their heads in the attic. No, I don't like, know had anything. The, had, the attic had the floor fallen out of the attic, it would have probably fallen, uh, fallen on their heads. I, is what I don't know about the it. still. You know, don't yeah. don't mind that hooch smell that you're smelling right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, don't mind the creaking from the, the ceiling. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, yeah. Well, yeah. I, have, I have a, like a small five-gallon pot still. Still in a box. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, I have to. That, I have to get cracking. You know, yeah. I, I have to make me something. Oh yeah, because I can make me a gallon for myself, and it's legal. Yeah, you know that's the. I'm know. not selling it. I'm drinking yeah. it myself. Yeah, you know, I mean, you just did a, a moonshine here not too long ago. Yeah, my apple pie. I make that every yeah. year. Every year yeah, I make it around this time. It is. Um. I make it every year at this time. I give it out to family and friends, you know, because I let it sit in a jar for 30 days and you mm -hmm. can't, you can't taste that grain alcohol. Oh, I bet. Yeah. It just mellows right out and you can, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I also make limoncello. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to do a video on that too. Uh, I do make limoncello. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That's one thing I haven't quite gotten into yet is making my own. I mean, I've done some infusions. Simple. Yeah. I have um, I have some cinnamon tequila and cinnamon vodka that have been sitting in my pantry for about a year now. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, it's going to be cinnamon. Yeah. It's going <laughs> to be very strong cinnamon flavor. So yeah. I... I just saw them here a couple of days ago when I was in there, and I'm like, oh, I should probably do something with those because it is cinnamon season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like limoncello, you know. it takes time. Yeah. You have to let the rinds of the lemon sit in the grain alcohol for at least a month. Oh, yeah. I believe it. For it you have to, to get all those moment. oils out. Yeah. So, so. it's like a multi-part. Okay, so I'll film doing this now, but it, the end product, it's simple, 
and it's delicious. Really, oh, all it is is grain alcohol, lemon peel, and simple and syrup. Sugar. Simple yeah. syrup. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I usually make like two gallons of it when I make it. <laughs> but you know, yeah, but is lemon chill really a liqueur? Or is it more like a wine? <laughs> you know. The, well, the way I make it, I'm sure it's more a wine. Yeah. You know, uh, the way I make it, because I'm uh, I'm not s- distilling it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. yeah. So. So it's all good. It's all good. So listen, guys, if you haven't caught up with one girl, one glass, one world, you can check her out on her TikTok right there amazing content there's all her tiktok videos you can check her out go to her links you can see she has a website cw spirits ambassador uh her all her links are right there and her website she's got a blog she does stuff like that it's truly amazing and I appreciate you coming on the show. We had a great oh, time. I, yes, I've had a great time. Thank you. Just make sure you're, you you message me about that wine. About the Beaujolais. <laughs> yeah. About the Beaujolais. So I can remember because I'll forget. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know. But, I'll, I'll look up and see when uh, the Beaujolais release day is and I'll uh, get it to you. Okay, excellent. I appreciate that. Elena, is there anything you want to get out to the world? Um, not just, uh, you know, drink what you like. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Don't, don't let people like me who, ha- who have more advanced palates tell you what you're drinking is crap. Yeah. Because everybody's palate is different. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Everybody drink has a different like. thing. Yeah. Drink what you like. And at the end of the day, if you enjoy it, that's what's important. Yeah, for sure. So. I totally agree with that. 100 yeah. percent you know I, I, my favorite drink is vodka cranberry simple sure. that's Very simple yeah. my favorite drink that's my go-to yeah, yeah. You know? my go-to is vodka lemonade yep yeah. you know i mean from the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cocktails that we've made yeah. my go-to yeah. is vodka cranberry i don't know yeah. why you know it's simple yes yeah. Simple, it's easy, it's quick, and you know, it's consistent. Yeah. And you've got so much you can do with it too, with different vodkas. So well, let's yeah. not go down the vodka rabbit hole either. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> I know. I know. I was looking at I was looking at my, my liquor shelf and I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> um I have a lot of stuff. Yeah, where's the uh vodka flavored vodka? Because everything else is flavored. <laughs> yeah, and I actually have to do that sometimes. I'm like, where is the just a plain old Finlandia vodka? Yeah, the bottle of somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's crazy. I mean, I just killed last night. I just finished off my bottle of Florida. So that's good stuff. The that armor's really barrels. Yeah, that was yeah. good. That was good. Yeah. I have you to. tried the nuke waste? I have not. I need Ooh. to put in an order for that. You know what? It's melon vodka, mm-hmm. but it's not Maduri. You would think it would taste like Maduri. Yeah. Because it's melon, but it's vodka. Yeah. It's more, let me say, tart than Maduri. Maduri is very sweet, but the nuke waste has like a tart melon flavor to it. To me, anyway. <laughs> So Ooh, I'll yeah, it's different. That. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more probably more like a, a honeydew type. Yes. So yes. versus Majori, which is like that super sickly sweet. Yeah. So Yep, it's more honey dead melon than anything else. Yeah, it's good. Definitely try that one. Yeah. I, I, I recommend that's gonna be my next order. So I recommend well, I know what I'm ordering next. Oh, they just Lord. released it all today. Yeah. Joe Marcotte, like, if you're listening, oh man, killing yeah. me. <laughs> I know. I and love he gave me the 
he gave you a sneak peek on the podcast. I know. I know. <laughs> Listen, I, I love Marcotte. They are great people. Oh, they uh, really great are. product. Uh, and they just released a whole bunch of different things on CW Spirits. And that's the only place you can get Marcotte unless you go to their facility. Distillery. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they do have some in the Oregon liquor stores, but yeah, if you're not in Oregon, the only place you can get Marcotte products is CW Spirits. And that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Oh, Elena, it's been a blast. It really has, uh, you know. It has been. Great stories, great conversation. <laughs> yeah. uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, no problem. We'll, we'll definitely have to get on, get you on again, and we'll go yes. we'll have a good conversation. It's been a blast. Guys. And maybe next time my computer will work. <laughs> yeah, listen, <laughs> we made it problem. work. It worked, we right? It worked. We did. So, guys, go, go follow Elena. One girl, one glass, one world. And that's on all the socials? Yeah, um, on Twitter, X, or whatever they're yeah. calling uh, it right yeah. now. It's one girl, one glass, just because when I got that social media piece, you could only have so many characters in your name. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I so, got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah, so, but yeah, no, it's some form of one girl, one glass, one world across all social media platforms. So. Yep, and you can find Elena. Everywhere, mixing up those fantastic cocktails. Yeah. Doing some wine blogs and just great content. Great content. Get out there. Give her a follow. Give her some love. She does some great, great, great things. Elena, it's been a pleasure. My pleasure. We'll definitely have to have you on again soon. Sounds good to me. So Let's do it. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, take care. Thanks for coming yeah, on. No all right. No problem. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Guys, what a great time we had with Elena. Uh, shared some awesome stories. Knowledge of wine is crazy. It's awesome. So, listen, go give her a follow. Make sure you like, subscribe, share Tiki Talk, the podcast. And we will see you next time, guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Tiki Talk, the podcast. Remember to hit that subscribe, like, and share. Until next time. <laughs>